Disclaimer, this is not a tutorial, but rather a form of research documentation. However, you are still welcome to recreate this system in any way possible. If you ever have those 2am thoughts about something totally unimportant or unrelated, what we're about to see is exactly that. I'm relatively new to Stoneworks and therefore not very accustomed to different mechanical contraptions to make vehicles operate smoother or more effectively, which may show in my contraption so far. I also haven't put any time into doing actual missions or a career mode so far. Rather than that, I've spent most of my playtime messing around in creative, getting to know the game and its mechanics. Now, because I'm somewhat of a pleb, I couldn't figure out how to work a normal diesel engine, and I happen to this day, which led me to building pretty much everything with jet engines. Jet engines are designed to operate at high RPM, usually powering aircraft rather than ground or water-based vehicles. Jet engines also significantly lack power in lower RPM ranges, where a piston engine would see its most effective range. This lack of power in the low ranges makes clutches and gearboxes essential for two very simple reasons. One, jet engines take time to spool up. A direct connection with any form of propulsion will slow that process down, which in turn will cause you precious fuel. Two, because jet engines take so long to wind up to operational speeds, turning them off in a moment of idling is something you may not want to do. That is if you need your power at a moment's notice. But there is a third factor, especially for boats. While water jets have deflectors you can use to reverse your power without changing any gears or altering the drive shaft whatsoever, regular boat propellers can't do anything of the sort. What this means is that you'll need a gearbox with a 1 to negative 1 ratio, but switching from a positive ratio to a negative at a moment's notice will severely drop engine RPM, causing a loss of power. I was having this issue with one of my first vessels and began thinking about how to solve the issue. My solution? Pseudo-automatic dual-clutch gearbox drivetrain. The idea was to basically have two permanent gears at all times which were actuated by individual clutches rather than releasing a clutch, switching gears and then actuating the clutch again. So naturally the first step was to set up a split drive shaft connected to two independent clutches, each connected to their own gearbox, positive and negative ratios respectively. All that's left to do is merge the drive shaft and connect it to the propellers, as well as setting up the logics, which was a fairly easy task for this build. While the clutch of the positive ratio gearbox was directly hooked to the forward backward axis, the clutch for the reverse gearbox was wired through a numerical inverter. This would mean that W would only accelerate the ship forwards, while S would only accelerate it backwards. After finishing a rudimentary hull, it was time to test the concept. Result? Transitioning between drive and reverse became extremely smooth and a lot easier. This strongly reduced the drop in power when transitioning between the two directions, keeping the jets at a higher RPM. As an added bonus, the ship now featured a neutral gear, as the clutches would only apply pressure when actuated. Evidently, the hull wasn't exactly purpose-built for anything else in supporting the dual-clutch drivetrain concept. Because of this, the hull handled poorly and wouldn't be useful for anything else than getting from one island to another. While beginning to think about how to effectively apply the dual-clutch drivetrain to a proper ship, a new idea came to mind. Single-drive boats usually have poor maneuverability at low speed, making parking or other alignments in port rather hard. In order to counter this, larger ships often receive auxiliary propulsion in the form of maneuvering thrusters or strafing propellers. But because this would be annoying to set up due to the propulsion grid that'd be spread out throughout the ship's hull, I decided to go for another solution, differential steering. Instead of powering both propellers through the same drivetrain, the drives would be separated, allowing each drive to be controlled independently. In turn, this would mean that one propeller can be working in a forward direction, while the other is working in a backwards direction, severely tightening the turning circle. With that thought in mind, I went back to the drawing board. My first thought was to split the drive after the merge and adding separate gearboxes for alternating between forward and reverse drive, retaining the old base concept. I quickly scrapped this concept, however, since it defeated the purpose of the dual-clutch system. Instead, I decided that duplicating the dual-clutch, effectively creating a quadruple clutch, was a lot easier. This, in itself, wasn't so hard. The hardest part about making this concept operational, though, was setting up the logics controllers in order to alternate between differential steering and regular drive. After a little back and forth of trying out some controllers and staring at the block selection menu, I decided that a flow graph would help me best in coming up with a viable solution. 
Going back to the drawing board, I began with a logic system that would switch the input axes from W and S to A and D, as well as inverting the controls for one of the drives. With the help of a flowchart, I set up the logic's controllers and hooked them up to the helmet drives. Result? With the experimental hull I built for this new setup, the differential steering enabled my ship to turn on the spot, reducing the circle to the smallest range possible. While the controls were finicky, this was a major improvement over the last experiment's results. Due to the nature of having to switch between the two modes, the differential steering cannot be used during drive, although this shouldn't be much of a detriment since it would be unreasonable to do so anyways. That doesn't mean I won't look into enabling both at the same time though. Looking at my flowchart, I realized that making this Logic's controller set up into a microcontroller won't be that hard, since I already knew exactly how to structure it. I started off by creating a microcontroller for one drive only, since the differential steering only requires one of the drive's inputs to be heavily altered. However, I quickly came to the realization that creating a microcontroller for both drives wouldn't be much of a stretch, so I decided to completely recreate the flowchart and call it a day. One day, I might upgrade the microcontroller further to a point where no external logics are required, but that's something I'm leaving for the future me. Engineering solutions like this is fun to me. It's often in games like this where I enjoy solving problems like this more than the regular gameplay, since to me it creates a bigger, more dynamic challenge. Of course, this is coming from someone who hasn't even tried the career mode of Stoneworks. As for this concept, you're very welcome to integrate it into your own vehicle designs or even further develop it if you don't already have a better drive system in place. I will however not upload the experimental ships nor the microcontrollers to the workshop, since I believe that one understands the concept better by recreating it, either step by step or out of their own interpretation, instead of ripping it out of a pre-built hull. If you do use it or decide to put it under some development, do let me know.